Welcome to our roundtable discussion on de design requirements for circularity. So we're going to explore this as in a concluding way. And of course, around the table, I'm joined with Juan. You've been looking at reuse. Max, you've been looking at repair. Anna Karin, re remanufacturing, of course. And Armin, you've been looking at recycling. And I'm joined as well by Esther. You've been looking at all the issues around uh, resources and, and other aspects. And of course, myself, Dave Peck. You know us all. You've seen us over the weeks. I really want to get into now um, what uh, what are and I want to ask my first question? What are the ideal design strategies for your re option? So if I can start with you, Juan, what are your ideal strategy design strategies for your re option? Um, well, I think the main strategy is to design for um, durability and uh, robustness. So well, this of course means that the products should. Uh, withstand the normal wear and tear by being made out of good materials and also by thinking well about how the connections work to prevent connections from breaking, of course. And, uh, and well also in this aspect, you just have to take into account the emotional connection that the users will have to their products. So it's not only about the technical uh, durability, but also about the emotional and the social durability of your products. Mm. OK. Thanks. For repair, it's um, an easy to open design product, it's a good design for repair. To open product. the product to up. To open the product okay. up, yeah, um, for the customer himself or for the serviceman, both sides. And the second um, is um, to, to easily change a broken module, for example. So you need to have um, a modular structure of your product and it's designed for repair, yeah. And it's both the company repair and the um, customer repair that are both different things. But you, if you think about a design for repair, you have to think about these both mm. approaches. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And I come in for reman. Yes, for uh, remanufacturing, I think that the main thing is to design for modularity and disassembly, making it easy and profitable uh, to separate valuable components or um, materials and to be able to use them again. Mm. And that will, uh, if, if you design for that, then I think uh, remanufacturing will be become much better. Mm. More successful for the businesses involved. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And finally, I'm in for recycling. Yeah. yeah, for recycling, it is difficult and easy at the same time. Mm. <laughs> so the, the ideal design strategy would be to avoid different materials in your product. Mm. So easy it is. <laughs> You have seen in some case studies uh, some examples, for example, the glasses where we have designed it according to this rule. Mm. Uh, but in the practical world, if you need different materials in order to fulfill different functions and requirements, mm. please use a modular design and uh, which is easy to dismantle mm. and where the parts and the materials are easy to separate. But I'm, I'm hearing as well, just looking at all these different design strategies, some could be intention. Mm. So what would be wanted for reuse may be a problem for reman or for, and always, there can always be intention yeah. with recycling. So it's finding that optimal balance for the different <coughs> strategies. Okay, I'd like to move on a little bit and I'd like to ask a second question. And Esther, if I can turn to you with this one. Um, I'd like to come back to this core issue about, about resources and the resource challenge. Um, so what could be said about these design strategies in relation to the resource challenge? Yeah, um, I, I think a, a, a lot can be said about that, but I'll, I'll be brief here. Um, uh, I hear for, for the different re-options, I hear uh, a few things. Mm -hmm. One is uh, mentioned by Juan already, like design for durability design for robustness. Mm. This is um, um, yeah, something that, that keeps the product in the use phase for a longer time without anything else. So from the point of view of the resource challenge, I would say uh, in principle it's a very good option because you don't have to, to drive uh, to, to and fro with, with, with new, new parts or new modules. Uh, you don't have to, to sort of bring it back to the company uh, and do stuff with it. Mm. Uh, you, you just keep it in use and nothing else. So that saves resources, that's clear. And it also avoids 
um, waste, uh, it might have some environmental implications, like um, yeah, keeping a product in use that, that is not energy efficient anymore. Mm. That, that is, can be a problem with uh, products like that. Um, um, if I think about recycling especially, then I hear design for, for yeah, simple products yeah, that consist of only of a, a few materials. Um, so that they can be recycled better. Well, the recycling process also takes energy. That's always the case. But we know that, for example, for, for metals, um, the energy that it takes to produce new materials is so much more mm. than it takes to, to produce secondary materials. So from that point of view, recycling is, is I guess, always a strategy that, that helps mm. with the resource challenge. Mm. All of the options they avoid waste and they, they avoid having to uh, dig up new resources out of the ground. Mm. Um, some of them have, have clear energy drawbacks, but um, yeah, some of them also have clear energy gains. But I guess it's true to say that we will, in all the strategies, we always need feedstock of new product. So this primary mining of materials will continue. It's just the rate and the impact on how we do it, which will need to dramatically change. Is that what also what you're saying? Or well, not, not even that. I mean, if we are in a sort of a steady state economy, mm -hmm. we don't we may be able to keep the stuff in there circling all the, all mm -hmm. all the time, okay. not having to use new ones. Of course, we are very far from that now. Okay. So that's something for the more distant future. It's a transition that we're interested in. Okay, that's good. Thank you, Esther, for that. Now, I'd like to move on to another question, a third question to you all. I'd like to again to go round in order <coughs> with the Rees. Which type of product do you think the, the different strategies that we've talked about are most useful in the context that we're talking about? One, let's talk about reuse. What, what do you think? Well, I think the, the first... Uh, type of product that comes to my mind is of course buildings because we're very used to seeing buildings being used for a very long time. I mean in Europe it's quite uh, frequent to see buildings that are 500 years old and are still mostly used as they were originally built. Um, of course with buildings becoming more and more technologically complex we will probably have to stop looking at uh, buildings that can just remain in use as they are originally but instead that we can sort of uh, separate the components and the systems and then reuse these components as systems as parts uh, that can just be reused into the next generation of, uh, of buildings. Uh, when we look at smaller things like furniture or household items of course, uh, well those can easily be designed to be more durable and to be more robust and to last for longer. And uh, well of course the most complicated ones might be uh, electronics and those kinds of uh, equipment because they just change so frequently at such a fast rate that um, it's quite hard to be able to reuse them without them becoming uh, obsolete. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Max, on the repair. <coughs> so yeah, the idea <coughs> thing would be to, to um, have an expanded life span for each product so designed for repair is especially for complex products with which have um, a short lifespan at the moment like mobile phones or um, some kind of toys or mm. cheap household items like washing machines yeah but um that one hand if you think about mobile phone and if we expand the, the lifetime of a mobile phone we have to um think about something of not on only the repair of the hardware, but of the software as mm -hmm. well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I don't need a, a really good mobile phone after 10 years with my, my hardware, I can repair it and fix it already for my own, but the software is out of date, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That That's always a challenge <coughs> for a lot of the reads. Anna Karin, if we talk about reman. Yeah, when, when we talk about remanufacturing, I think it suits uh, products where the core and or some of the components or modules last longer than the product as a whole. Mm. Um, it's also better for products of high volumes mm. because you, you, pr you make a facility, a, a, a manufacturing site or remanufacturing site where you are doing many, compo many products of the same kind. Yeah. So you need high volumes. Yeah. 
I think that cars and washing machines are good examples of that. Yeah, yeah. And we also seen remanufacturing of these kind of products already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We know it. Yeah. We know it's done, and we know it can be successful. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's good. And finally, I'm in the back yeah. recycling. <coughs> Regarding recycling. Uh, if you have products that are mainly made of metals, then it's quite easy to recycle them. Mm. It's not a big t uh, job because the technology is available and it's it's uh, it's usable. Um, when the mixture of materials increases, then mm. it gets more complicated. Mm. You need need additional technology. It gets more expensive and more energy is needed. Um, that means, for example, bicycles and cars are very good examples mm. for for recycling products. Uh, plastic materials are not so good to recycle as, as long as you want to get out uh, uh, also a plastic material out mm. of the process because due to technology reasons um, the quality of the plastic material, the recycled one, is always of a lower quality. Mm. Mm. So you reduce the yeah. quality of the material. Okay, thank you. Well, I've got a final question I'd like to ask. and. Um, do you think, and again, this is to everybody, do you, th do you think that companies will adopt these new design approaches that we've talked about in the course? Uh, or what needs to change? Can I come to you, Juan? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I think talking about durability and robustness uh, for reuse, I think it's already something that companies have been extracting value out of. I think when we think about a brand uh, that we relate to high quality is always because their products last for a very long time and because they perform very well for this very long time. Um, so maybe they haven't been realizing that they've been doing it, but they have been doing it. Uh, on the other hand, we have also looked in the previous weeks at examples like uh, bike sharing and car sharing, where the whole business model has changed towards uh, the company wanting to deliver a service for a very long time and therefore the product itself doesn't become that important. They don't have to sell that product, but they want to keep it in use for themselves for as long as possible. Mm. And therefore, their <laughs> revenue uh, stream will change and adapt to get more incentives out of this way of working. So that changes the design? Yes, okay. exactly. Max? Mm, to, to this kind of business models, if we come to that way, um, the design for repair was getting more important because we have already repair service and design for repair today for most complex and expensive products. Um, but it's so long it's cheap for the companies to sell and to grow by selling new products. Um, I think there, there will be less change um, unless we have models like leasing or rental models that the companies own the products or the lifespan. They have an interest that it's easy to repair, that the serviceman needs less time oh. to service or um, that the customer is happy with doing his for, for his own. Uh. And the other factor is, the other issue is the social factor, if you look at iFixit, oh. um, the customer starts all over the world fixing it for its own. For oh. In every little town and village we have repair cafes, we oh. have little repair stores. Oh. So um, these, these um, social impact have um, an influence to the companies and <coughs> companies will get known, hopefully, mm. <laughs> that it's uh, good to have a design for repair, mm. easy for the customer. Yeah. It all changes. Yeah. Hopefully. Interesting. Mm. Remanufacturing. What do we see there, Annika? Yeah. Um, we already see remanufacturing happening mm. in many cases mm. and, and very profitable. Um, I think that some changes which need to happen is, is, for example, the cooperation along the supply chain or along the supply circle, mm. you could say, mm. uh, to, to send things back to each other, to help each other, mm. to, to make things even better, mm. um, and also m to make this infrastructure to, to get the components back uh, globally, perhaps. Mm. Mm. Um, but still I'm convinced that when future products are designed to suit remanufacturing better, mm. it will become even more profitable and thus uh, used. So it's up to you, actually. <laughs> 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 exactly. Well yeah. done. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin. And, and on the recycling side, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter uh, at which uh, re-option we are looking at. 
uh, early or later, we have to follow these design rules to ensure the supply security of materials. Mm. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, we also have to think about the end of the product at the early stage of pro uh, design phase. Mm. That is for sure. Yeah. Um, and I'm also convinced. I'm also convinced of the fact that the technology of recycling has also a big impact. Mm. So mm. that means in future we will have um, advances in automatic dismantling, in better separation technologies, and better dismantling, and better sorting technologies, and that also will have an impact on the recycling rate of materials for sure. Mm. And if uh, sorry, you I, I, I I also want to add that, that there are new technologies like the digitalization making these things yeah. uh, possible. Mm. So I think we should also use the, the new technologies coming yeah. to on this uh, area as well. Sharing of information so that people can... Yeah, it's, it's about business. sharing yeah. of information, but it's also like collaborative robots mm -hmm. working with mm -hmm. dismantling or... or so, so there are new many new possibilities Logistics coming from... Logistics and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, just to I'm going to conclude, but Esther, did you have any thoughts on this? Because we've heard a little bit here about some about the business model, so there's business opportunities, but picking up on Armin's point that you know, this is about security of supply of materials for what we need to do in the 21st century. And I'm just wondering if you had any thoughts on the role of government and, and what they may well need to do yeah, for companies. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, one thing that that that, uh, that needs to happen for, well, Armin's prediction to come <laughs> true, that it all will happen of itself because we need to, I guess, is that there will come an incentive from policies to actually do that. For the moment, the cost of raw materials is very low, so the incentive from that point of view to actually move to, to uh, more recycling yeah, is, is very low. It's a um, of if, time. if certain materials will become scarce in the future, then uh, things like this may mm. happen, mm. but mm. it can also be brought on by governments, not mm. wait for it, but mm. for example, uh, things like a resource tax or even a carbon tax for energy mm. will mm. already yeah. move yeah. things yeah, right. in. in the direction of more secondary mm. production because it's so um, much more energy efficient than primary production mm. is. Mm. And that those are environmental impacts of course and we've always talked about reducing <coughs> waste right. so, so governments will move are moving on this yeah. around the world and going you just can't keep dumping stuff or mm. do, doing it in this way we have to do it completely differently and I think if I may conclude then um, we've heard from uh, well you've gone through the course you've seen You've gone through all, all the different uh, aspects that we've got around this table. Um, we are seeing a revolution happening. We're seeing a dramatic change happening around the world. Um, massive opportunities for businesses, massive opportunity for society, massive opportunity for, for governments. But the challenge is enormous. And I hope you have learned a lot on this course to address those challenges to go out there, and as Anna Karen rightly said, it's up to you to take these lessons, take this knowledge, and do something. And on that note, I thank you, I thank all my guests and partners here, and I thank all of you, and uh, goodbye.